I'll take you for a ride on the devil ship I'll take you for a ride where you sink or swim Now come with me and let this story begin Mike Patterson, welcome to the Pantels Podcast Studio for the first time. I made it! Yay! Um, I don't want to forget, because we're talking about a million and one things. Yes. Uh, we're going to get back to the vasectomy thing, yes. because that's going to be a funny story. <laughs> I watched Prey, oh, not, cool. not in preparation for this, just because you had told me to watch because you were in it, yeah. and, I, and I missed the screening because we were with Mike uh, far away. Yeah. God damn it, dude. They did you justice. It was a good movie. Thank you. You were out there stalking an alien. Yeah. A predator. A predator. If you will. Yeah. Destroying the French language yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. And, and it was so and, good. And the environment. You were a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Legit bad guy. You got to be good to be bad, bro. You have range. I do have range. Yeah. It's not easy to get, um, to go from happy-go-lucky to like piece of shit on, like, yeah. it's, not, it's not that easy, but it was I fun. Was, I was trying to go full heel. Because <laughs> uh, you, you know, like, you know, in wrestling, you need you have an ultimate. In order to build up the Ultimate Warrior, you need a Rick Rude. Oh yeah, it's true. So I wanted is. to be like Rick Rude, you know, like somebody so bad that you're like, oh, just kill this guy, just beat this guy up, and then uh, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, I don't know if I can ruin the movie. Well, well, most everyone dies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, who do you think is going to win? The guy that looks like the Burger King manager or the Predator? But uh, you had the role of the bad guy that people wanted to see again, which is good because that's also yes. hard to pull off. I Normally know. they get rid of this guy. The writing was really good. And there was really, like, they wrote that for, like, seven years. So, like, oh, I'm that's pretty... Why. Yeah, it's a really, really well-written script. I like the idea of going back uh, on these movies, yeah. uh, these franchises, and kind of seeing uh, almost a what if or what happened originally. This is why this makes sense in the later movies. Yeah. I like seeing that they had contact with the like the natives and cuz if you look at the old like Prometheus for example, sure. the alien predator, they yeah. all they like to mix and mingle. Yeah, 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 they yeah. have that whole well did they start humanity? Did they come here earlier? Right, so right. I like that they keep playing with that. I like they do shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it was it's cool. It's it's neat to see especially like like things that you've watched a million times like I've seen all the predators. <clears throat> Except for the fourth one. Um, Which one was the fourth one? The the one with the dog, the predator dogs. You know, there's predator like, dogs. There's like I uh, didn't even watch that. If there's that's one a real with thing. like uh, Keegan Michael Peel. Uh, oh, I didn't watch that. No, no. There's like a predator dog and like an autistic kid who's got like what? superpowers. How did I miss it? No, the superpowers. No, I would have seen that. That's he's oh. got super mind powers. Nah, that's stupid. It was not bad. I I like I like all predator movies. So like. But it doesn't fit into the the universe. No, I, I remember mind powers and yeah, it was it was a kid who had super mind powers and he was able to do stuff to get the predator, like this, attack the predator. Yeah, but just because he knew computers and he could like uh, like make the spaceship go or something like that. Really, I can't really remember it. It was it seemed I remember being watching a predator and like uh, John Mulaney's wife is in that Olivia Munn. John Mulaney. John Mulaney is married to Olivia Munn? Yeah. Olivia Munn. Yeah, he left his wife for Olivia Munn. I have no idea. Yeah. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Oh, we're talking about the same Olivia Munn. Psylocke. But yeah. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. They have a kid together. What? And they're on the road all the time. Like that kid like sleeps in a pack and play. I had like, no idea. Either doing a movie or like they're on a tour bus doing like Madison Square Garden. What a weird I know. tabloid like inf info type of thing. I had no idea. I have all these ideas. I really like both of those people. Yeah, but I didn't know that they were together. This is so yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah. When he got sober, he got Olivia Munn. That's funny. So that's, uh, yeah. That's what you get. Well, I'm not going to quit drinking, bro. Just quit drinking, bro. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep growing. No, I can't. I'm Olivia Munn's looking for an upgrade. No, no, no. I'm with Monica and kill me. Yeah, no uh, shit. Yeah. yeah just talking, just joking about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is just <laughs> stupid mother. Yeah, she grew up on a farm, man. Have you seen her arms? She She'll just rip me apart, you know? <laughs> Oh, speaking of farm, you had to film in Alberta. You were gone for a while. Yes. Oh, this is what you were filming. I remember this you were gone for a while. Filming, yeah. Because it was super secret and I'm gone and everybody's like, hey, can you do trophies? Hey, can you do Laval, uh, you know, the place next to the Recreotech? And I'm like, no, I'm uh, shooting something. Like, what is it? I, oh, I'll say that for you in case your agent or Disney doesn't know. You are great at keeping secrets. Oh, thanks, dude. You, you didn't even try to let it slip. Nope. All you were telling everyone was, look, guys, I'm serious. It's not a no. vacation. I have to film something. I can't say anymore. Yeah. I had zero clue would have had anything to do with aliens. I was gone. Yeah, it was crazy. You didn't even say Disney, I just realized. You didn't say anything. No. Good. Yeah. This yeah. should be noted. This is my fourth Disney thing, and uh, so I always know that not not saying like they just like to keep their secrets. They don't want to like let it known. Like so I, I agree not, with like, them fully. Yeah, it's cooler. Like 
when it when the movie dropped and people watched this movie, it's not like I'm not gonna change like my like eight thousand followers aren't gonna like tick the movie like make it more popular, but like my 8,000 followers were like, oh man, you're in this movie, blah, 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 you know? So well, you got cool. all of us to watch it because you were in it? Yes. Like when I saw Prey before I, you told me you were in it, yeah. I was like, ah, I didn't care much. No. And then, went, no, because I, I thought, ah, it's going to be, a lot. Disney's been screwing up a lot of movies. Mm. And then, uh, but then as soon as I, you know, you told me you were in it, you invited me to the screening. But this is 20th Century Studios, which is bought by Disney. It was good. Yeah, it was really good. Was, I was watching the She-Hulk the other day. I couldn't get past the first episode. I still haven't seen it. Really? But, yeah, because okay. it just, I was excited for a superhero. It just felt very agenda-driven. Like every two seconds was weird comments from the She-Hulk. And I, at first I was like, is, okay, that once, twice. And then my wife was like, I can't take this, turn it off. Really? Yeah, and I was like, oh, fuck. If she thinks it's too woke. When I... She-Hulk came out, it was like she was a, a lawyer. Yeah, and that's she awesome. she used her She-Hulk she -Hulk powers to like like Matlock, you know? Yeah, Matlock that would have been fun. guy with like the hair that was yeah, able yeah. to go out and like, <laughs> yeah. do all the fighting for Matlock. That's what I was waiting for. I was I, I was all for that. But ah. it, it was just very like uh, control your fear. And she's like, I'm a woman. I always have fear that someone's going to rape me. Someone's gonna... I was like, all right, that's one. Tw then again, yeah. I was, I'm better than you, right? Because I'm a woman. I did this faster. And then it, it, my wife was like. I can't, this is, it's too on the nose. They're, they're, okay. You know, she's like, I can't take it anymore. Your, like, wife, right. your wife hates wokeness? No, she, well, I don't, I don't <laughs> no, think she knew. <laughs> but, oh, after, no. but if she got it, if, if, yes. if, and she's very, she's the opposite of me. She's very docile. But, yeah. So if it was getting to her, yeah. I was like, okay, it's not just me. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad because um, I like that whole universe. I love the Marvel stuff. See, I have young children, so I've been watching a show called Octonauts <laughs> and Moana. I just watch kids shows all day. And the I don't know Moana had a show. show. Moana had a show? I didn't know. I thought it was just a movie, Moana. No, I just watched the oh, movie okay, the Moana movie. over and over again, and I can handle it because The Rock's in it. That's a good movie, though. It's a very good movie. It's a very good <laughs> Let's movie. Let's be honest. Yeah, Moana's you can good. watch it over yeah. and over again, but that's all I watched. The last adult movie I watched was Prey at my screening in downtown Montreal. What's Octonauts? It's a bunch of uh, cute little animals that um, live under, like in like some kind of weird submarine yeah. underneath the water, and their their whole thing is to go up to a barracuda and go, "Don't eat that turtle." Here, I have some fish crackers, and they're like they're like protecting. They're saving animals. They're saving animals. So you learn about the animals as you save them. Oh no! Look out! The mountain goat is going to have a blah blah blah, and there's like some kind of like it's like a polar bear and like a penguin. And that's literally what I do all day. If you have kids, that's what you're going to end up doing is just watching with your kids. That sounds like a good show for kids. Oh, it's it's awesome. But Paw Patrol is awful. My dog watches Paw Patrol. used to watch Paw Patrol. I hate Paw Patrol. How come? It's dogs doing dog stuff. No, it's a private... Um, it's basically a private police force saying that you don't <laughs> actually need to use, uh, you know, the government. So it's like, <laughs> oh, there's a big problem. So we better call in this private police force, the Paw Patrol, to solve all of our problems where that's, we should just pay our taxes and let the real firemen do it, not some, like, goof named Marshall. That's some dog. <laughs> yeah, some dog. He's a klutz. Well, when I heard Rogers, octonauts... I yeah. thought it was eight Nazis solving crimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's knives out. That's the plot for Knives Out Two. Yeah. It's uh, eight Nazis. Oh, but that's um, funny. It's a private police force saying we'll take things into our own he's hands. He's bringing it up right there. Yeah, look at how cute those kids are. The Octonauts. There, there's a there's a pirate named Quasi. He's like, I like to take risks. Your dog would love this show. Mm -hmm. You're still in the wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. How would you I'm wrestling uh, September 23rd at uh, Studio TD, the old uh, Astral. That's a beautiful fucking place. Beautiful. I saw beautiful. Hannibal Burris there years, years ago. Cool. When I had first started, I think, when I was doing open mics. It's great. Love that place, yeah. Yeah, I rented it out to, on October 19th, I'm going to do a show there. You're going to wrestle? No, I'm going to do a stand-up show there on a Wednesday night. Oh, get the fuck out yeah. of here. Yeah, yeah, I decided to rent it. If you're going to record it, yeah, um, the, I, it probably doesn't have it, but that place, is it equipped, or are you going to rent your own equipment? I'm going to get it uh, Amir, um, Amir, the guy that does Iron Ladle with me, to record okay. it, because he's the only guy I trust. It's He's so good, and he's like got all this 90s technology that really sounds really good. My first album was done with somebody else. My second album was done with him, and like the comedy nest sounded like there was like 2,000 people. That's like what he, you want. He didn't sweeten it. He just recorded. he knows where to put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they should have got him for those albums for for just for laughs because we, we they had we didn't have that many people last year when we were doing oh, it because no. it was last minute. Ah. And you could you know how the nest is big and wide yeah. you could hear it. Oh, no. Yeah, but that if you don't know, I I get it. If you don't know, it's too hard to circumvent a big room for comedy. But the nest has the the microphones already there. Do they use them? 
I have no idea. I don't think so. <clears throat> so I don't know. So Abdul, who did my first album, didn't use them, and Amir was like, "There's microphones hanging from the ceiling. Let's, Let's turn these. them on." And yeah. that worked. Oh yeah, this fucking guy. I like I like people that are like that. He's like um he's like he does I do metal with him, but his real job is he does lightning protection. So he's his dad like, made a he prays? No, <laughs> no, he made a um he made a Faraday cage that goes over oil and gas facility a facility things. So like basically like in Oklahoma and Texas where there's a lot of gas and oil, they got to hold they got to store all that oil, but then the there's also a lot of lightning. So the lightning would hit it, there'd be like a massive explosion, massive fires. So they would have like, you know, like um like you know the what do you call lightning rods? Yeah, the, and that, those poles there. Yeah, yeah they, they never work. You know, so his new thing is he built a Faraday cage and he does like he builds like um like an electromagnetic and it goes around. Yeah, or under or over, and it's like it doesn't exist to the lightning, and it's cool. And he's a Muslim, so he has to go to Texas, and it's like you know. So they're like, oh, "Do you want to kill all Americans?" He's like, "No, I I'm here to protect, work. I'm here to protect your business." <laughs> like so, it's really he's really that's awesome. Yeah, and he's like a scientist that all of a sudden one day saw me. At uh, I met him through Ali Hassan. Okay, and uh, I was doing like I had a keyboard song, and he was like, "That was a really good song, but you're really shit at playing keyboards. You're really bad." Like that's the point. I'm just yeah. having fun. No, I was trying to do so. So he took my keyboard song and turned it into like the Seventh Sense, Sex with Ghosts. So I wrote a song like ten years ago called uh, "Like I Have Sex with Ghosts" because I have not the Sixth Sense, but I have the Seventh. Which is having sex with ghosts and like all the all the ama- and we made a video and stuff like that. It's really ridiculous. Um, so we've been making metal for all this time, and then like we just kind of still hang out. He's like a good friend. I really kind of like a him. genius. Yeah, he's kind of like uh, he's like if Poseidon was smart. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. He's Bizarro Poseidon. <laughs> he's Bizarro World Poseidon. He's Bizarro World Poseidon. Like, he, he's he, like he, we can't he, solve this problem. Poseidon <laughs> walks in with a monocle. I have this, gentlemen. Don't you worry. <laughs> There's an electromagnetic field that we can... Yeah, we can tap into the Earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Earth has energies. Yes. Well, that's fucking badass. You, you're good at recording your stuff. I remember when you had... It, when the cover was like the Olympic Stadium, right? And you're mm-hmm. like... Uh, Mike, um, uh, uh, Mike Ward. Mike Ward. Mike Patterson does Montreal or something like that. No, it's Mike Ward. Mike Patterson live at Wembley Stadium. Live at, But it had the Olympic Stadium <laughs> yeah, in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the audio, I think... Yeah, you're good at doing that. You, I guess through the years, you've realized what works and what doesn't. Yes. Because it's a lot of people think it's very simple. No. Ah, I'm just gonna record it, uh, and I every time I hear that because of the podcast, I always tell them, "No, guys, audio is the most important." Yeah, you know, think about it, or yeah. else it, it doesn't matter how good the video is. You just fucked up the entire production. Yeah, but I think you caught on to that quick. Well, I, I've done a lot of cartoons, so I kind of know where the mic is, and I kind of whatever, and so like, uh, and I've done a lot of voiceover, like you know, <laughs> Desjardins insurance. Oh, you've done, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm only so. getting into this now. Uh, cool. Wednesday, I have my first uh, non-speaking role. Oh, fun! Yeah. On what? Uh, I can't say the the name, but cool. it's a it's a production. I think she it's gonna Hulk. be on Crave. Uh, it's like oh, a cool. li- it's like a mini series. Cool. And I just play like some uh, in the eighties. I play a reporter nice. I'm trying to get some some answers because oh, I have fun. the look. Yeah. Right. But Absolutely. Yeah, you definitely do look like once a I 1980s. put the hair down and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like you're a guy like 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 a smarmy reporter. Like, yeah. Just give, be give like, it to me. Man, see. Like, yeah. Uh, what was that thing with the triangle? Like uh, that would come in like the guys going through their garbage. And stuff. Oh yeah, you know yeah. That I, mean? like, yeah I have the perfect. I put it down a bit, yeah. make it greasy. It'll yeah. it'll look fine. Yeah. So that that's pretty a cool. Current affair. Look at me. Who's that going through our garbage? Oh, it's Fantella. Yeah, he's looking up. Reporter. I'm looking for answers. See, <laughs> yeah, I need some answers. That's cool. What's yeah, yeah it's a. Uh, so it's I like what you're doing. I like the fact that you're it, and I know how long it takes and how hard it is. Yeah. The no's, the no's, the no's until you get the yeses and then people see what you're capable of. Oh yeah. There's so many no's that happen. There's so many things that you almost get. Like Like you us know. in comedy. Yeah. It's yeah. And you almost get something and then you don't get something. And then everybody gets all mad all the time. If they pretend like you <sighs> never got no's. That's what happens to me in comedy. Everyone pretends yeah. like, oh look at this guy. Like I just started doing stand up yesterday. Like, it hasn't yeah. been 12 years of, it, like, it just... I get, like, personal messages that are, like, super kind of shitty. Like, they're like, oh, I could have gotten that. Or, oh, maybe that was my thing. Or, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, like, I, I don't care. Like, and I, I might have felt that way, like, 20 years ago. But then I kind of learned that, like, that's not my gig. Like, when you get a gig, it's your gig, Yeah, you that's know? it. 
So I like, could have got that. Yeah, like, yeah. Tell to my wife. Yeah, she yeah, may yeah. have picked you. Get I the was, fuck out of here. Like twenty years ago, I was jealous of Sugar Sammy, but I didn't realize that like he had like a global appeal. He's and Indian, also, and also he's like good looking. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> like I could have sh- been that Indian guy. I could have been that tall, good looking <laughs> Indian man. Why am I not that guy? You know, I was all mad and stuff. And then I kind of learned. And then whenever I was like, he was not there. Like all of a sudden, the, the works was full because they were looking for Sugar Sammy, and then I was there. I'd be like, oh, he's not here? Oh, that sucks. Oh, that guy's here. He's okay. You know, so that yeah. was kind of cool. So I kind of learned that early. So it kind of thing, you know, like the the not getting like jealous of people around you and kind of like. There's no real limit to, it feels like that maybe in the beginning, like there's limits to opportunity. So if somebody gets something, you're done. You can never have it. Right. But it's not true. No. It doesn't end because Sugar Sammy could be a Sugar Sammy. Yeah. I could be Pantelis and you could be Mike Patterson. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Like, I'm a guy from Montreal. I just did a big ass movie. Like, maybe other people from Montreal will be like, they'll be like, oh, that guy, oh, this is a good scene. There's like good people around here. So who knows? It should be, if the way I see it is, it should be motivational because if there are other Montreal comics, it should be like, uh, I'm a Montreal comic. I'm doing like Mike Patterson. And he was just on a Disney yeah. movie. Yeah. It was a big deal. It wasn't yeah. a small time. They had to fly him out. So that means opportunities for me exist. That's how it should be seen. Yes. Not, oh, that could have been me. Now my career is over. There's a That's big, crazy. Uh, yeah, he got a lot, He got a really big opportunity. How come I'm not getting this opportunity? You know. Did like, you even try? No, I don't even have an agent. I haven't done Yeah, yeah. I, said, I haven't taken a single acting yeah. workshop. I know? tweeted. I said I would love to be in that movie. Yeah. It didn't work. No. Exa- oh, my God. That's the worst. When people tweet, they're like, hey, I need a show. Blah, 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 blah. I haven't written anything. Do you know how many shows I've written that have been rejected or like almost gotten? And you're then, looking at them. <laughs> man, it's really hard. You just write a whole thing and then you're like, hey, I could do this. And then they're like, uh, like I shot um, my own pilot. Okay. And then uh, I presented it to uh, companies and then I got hired to write on other things. You know, that's I mean? kind of so, that's still in, that's still good. Yeah. So I feel good. Like I feel like I didn't lose all that time and money. So like because like good. he has talent. We yes. just want to direct his energy to something we were thinking of doing. And that we were already putting money into. So we're not going to put into money into something new. Building something. Yeah. That's fine. It's so, better yeah. than we're getting a restraining order. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, get out of here. Yo, did you, uh, the wrestling thing, this is what I, I don't want to forget. Um, did you ever try to get one of your agents or anything to reach out and to work with, even if just when they're here locally, like the big the big names, WWE yeah, no, or Yeah, I never really tried. It's really weird because it's, uh, I don't know, wrestling, especially Quebec. I know is, how much you love it. I do love it. And uh, Quebec wrestling is like this weird sort of, um, it's kind of like, you know, when I, you didn't go through this because I went like, I worked in uh, at the Comedy Works at Jimbo's for a long time. Just trying to headline the Comedy Works. That's all, That was all I wanted to do. And then I know I he was to, notoriously tough. Yeah, and then I got to do it. Then Absolute Comedy. I was working for Jason. I was just trying to become a headliner there. And then you get up with these, like, um, these kind of, like, I didn't, I wasn't thinking, you know? Like, I was like, if I can get this one bar owner to uh, champion me, then he'll talk to other bar owners. But that doesn't happen. No. You know what I mean? So I, I didn't know. And nobody actually told me. So I like to tell everybody, like, you know, you got to get out of the, the local politics because, you know? You have to do your own thing. Yeah. So, like, in wrestling in Montreal, there's a lot of local politics. So like, like people fight each other? Yeah, yeah. And it's, like, the people, like, you know, Sammy, Sammy Zayn that, like, go yeah, and yeah, travel yeah. and you get out. And then all of a sudden you – but if, if you're still there, like, everyone's like, oh, this guy does this. <laughs> you know, there's, like, a lot of gatekeeping. So That's in everything I've noticed. Oh, it's so nuts. It's so nuts. So I try to not – Get involved, and now wrestling is something that I realize doesn't make me money, so I just work for my brother's organization, and that's it, and I just wrestle, like, you know, five times a week, uh, five times a year, six times a year. Is his main event? Yeah. And how often is he putting on shows? He's got eight shows coming up. Eight? Yeah, over God the damn. next year. So, yeah, it's really good. So. It's because it's not easy. I know putting a wrestling show together no, is not fucking easy. No, they got to fly people out from, like, Impact, and then, like, you know, like, you fly. Like, he always gets, like, a couple of stars, and then I just, uh, right now I have a, I have a, yeah, I don't even want to, yeah. I got I got a big surprise coming, and okay. I got, like, uh, I might have, um, yeah, I might have a genie lamp, but I might have a genie. Uh, so, I don't want to no. talk about it, but, like, <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool. Oh, um, the other thing is, when you have a big, a genie lamp when the ref's not looking you can throw you can, a genie lamp and hit somebody over the head with a genie lamp and then give me the genie lamp that's a good game right? yeah and you can also have a genie 
if that actually exists. Does the genie exist? I think we're going to find out. Is it racist? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that would be amazing. Yes. So we have like a pretty cool uh, four show arc coming up. Okay. Which is good. And that's what I like to do. Like a lot of times you go into like wrestling and then you write like jokes and you write like gags and you write like stuff. They're like, I don't want to do this. Uh," You know, like, uh." and then like the wrestlers, they're close to it. Yeah, they're a little bit closer. They're worried, or then like we we like uh, like I, do you know the wrestler Sexy Eddie? I've heard about him a few times. The Jofo guys talk about him. They say he's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. So I did a three match thing, and it took me a lot of work. Like people kept stopping me, um, and they wanted me to not. And then it was basically uh, we face Sexy Eddie, and then we lose, and then uh, we come in and we cut his his dick off, and then uh, <laughs> so you have a lot of blood, and then we hold up a dildo. And we're like, That's I was blood, losing so his we're mind. Like, we're like, ah, and like, ah, and then the doctors are like, you know what? The do- they put up the X, and they're like, watch out, we cut his dick off, and then. Hey, he's cut his dick off. And then the next show. The Simon the 11 wrestling oh, now, eh? This is amazing. Yeah, yeah, the is next amazing. show, we put the dick in a coffin and uh, we spray painted the dick. Uh, we got a dildo and like, put it around uh, Velvet Jones's neck, who's Brad Alexis. And then uh, we were just like, yeah, we got your dick, Eddie. And then we had another match where he was just Eddie. And, uh, he oh, yeah, because he, yeah, he lost his sexy dick. He lost his sexy dick. So then, this is the weirdest thing in the world. I just knew this actor. And um, it's. Uh, it's the actor who who was going to play a doctor from Pakistan who um, could do an illegal procedure to put a killer whale orca penis onto Sexy Eddie so he could have the powers again. And then he, all of a sudden he had like amazing powers. And it's the same actor who is the doctor in, in CTV's transplant. So this is before he was famous. So we have like footage of him this is putting, so retarded know, these are the kinds of things that i write i love this i know but people get all like oh i don't know if i do this no, that's, you know? that's amazing that's, that's amazing, amazing. i love that i love that is amazing that's what wrestling was no? i know yeah dude i keep telling people when they're like oh you know wrestling sometimes it goes too far uh, dude i saw triple h dress up as kane Jump into a casket <laughs> and was, assault a corpse. That was the worst. That <laughs> yeah. was very much. Yeah, the, that like was, I've seen that. This is nothing. It's supposed to be ridiculous. Wacky yeah, wacky and, yeah. and uh, almost circus-like, but not the circus. Yeah, it's supposed to be serious in the sense that they take their job seriously and yeah. they perform to the best of their abilities, but not serious. You're watching the silly man do something serious. Exactly. It's yeah. like a theater with muscles and. Yeah. Uh, a little more wacky. I'll give you an example. And it's big. It's like Greek theater. Yeah, so like, it's supposed yeah, yeah. to be. Supposed to like they would have like masks and stuff, like you know, to show like everybody how big. Like you make your eyes a certain yeah. way, and it's hard. And that's then, how like, it should be. Yeah. Just like stand up, we have to be serious enough to love the craft and, and be good with our jokes, yeah. but we can't take ourselves too serious. We have to be able to fuck yeah. around. That's I, what it is. I stare. I say stuff, and then I just stare into the audience until they start laughing. Like you bully them. I bully them. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, no, no, I spent time on this. You're going to laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do the, uh, you know, like people like doing the detours. Yeah. Like, they like doing, oh, it's a swerve. I like doing a straight ahead highway. Life is a fucking highway. Um, I don't so have that, time to get off. Yeah, yeah. Just get on the highway. With, we're going straight. Does your, does your brother, they don't do stuff online. Like th- th- when, when this happens live, there's not going to be a feed online or later uh, it shows up I don't on think YouTube. So. Possibly later. They only just got belts like now. Is there a reason like, I, or I'm saying why not, but maybe he's thinking about it. I, uh, you know how we do the podcast. There's editing. There's, yeah. we have the equipment. I feel like they could do that with these wrestling shows. Oh, sure. To build a following online where people would follow the story arc. Right, right, right. But the thing is, is if, if you watch a wrestling show, you should have the story arc. Uh, you should have it done and finished same night. And then when you do the next show, you re you retell what happened, and it should take like thirty seconds to something tell them like, like that. something it, dumb. It would be fun if they would yeah. do that. Yeah, I think that would uh, that would be a hit. You just yeah. get fans from all over the place. There's a guy some I'm fighting right now whose name's Stone Rockwell, and he's um, mm-hmm. like an Indiana Jones kind of guy. And uh, so he, I'm going after this guy who, like, you know, he goes through jungles and shit. And uh, I'm like Michael the Mind Patterson, and I'm going to tell Stone Rockwell, and I'm going to steal all his stuff. Uh, it's great. So that, that's like, you know what I mean. Like, I just want to have something easy, and attainable. Fun. Yeah. Like, I don't want to show up to a wrestling show and be like, eh, you can't talk or you got to do this, you know? So, like, I had, like, a bunch of shit, you know? Like, Are, are there more, um, are, are there any wrestling, uh, I want to say organizations here, that are softer? Like, they don't, they wouldn't let people cut Sex Eddie's dick off. 
Uh, no, I think everybody would have. Like, I like I bullied them into this, and then they said <laughs> yes. You know, like you know, if you if you ask to do something enough times, you'll get to do it. If you could take this out of context and local media would report on it, it would be the funniest thing. Yeah. Comedian Mike Patterson <laughs> cuts a wrestler's yeah, dick off in a store. This is unacceptable. It was so great. It was really great. And it was like, there was like uh, that Joey Ryan had the same gimmick as Sexy Eddie where like you could touch the dick because like Eddie had it first and he, he got it in Japan. Then Joey Ryan went to Japan and then, do you know about Joey Ryan? With is the, he the guy that you touch the dick and, and you go you flipping? flipping? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sexy Eddie would do the same thing. But then when Joey Ryan, they, the the bookers in gave him the same thing. And then he in just Japan. went, yeah. And then he came back and he just started. I was just like, who is this guy? Why is he doing Sexy Eddie's gimmick? And then uh, he got like, yeah, he got like canceled for like something. Sex so sexual. He, uh, yeah, yeah. Imagine the guy who's like, touch my dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, he got canceled. Eddie, Joey Ryan did, not Sexy Eddie. Oh, no, no, Joey. I don't know the guy's name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I've seen where he, they, they grab his dick and people go flipping. Yeah, Sexy yeah. Eddie used to do that too, but then he had kind of had to stop doing that. It was crazy. So the other guy... Was, another thing about Sexy Eddie was when we did the cutting off his dick gimmick, I, I had to ask him and be like, I'm like, it's wrestling's fake, so you got, you got to work with the guy. So I was like... I wouldn't use that word. You know that thing <laughs> in your pants that you have that makes it look like you have a boner? When you're wrestling, like that big, whatever it is, yeah, yeah. we'll just take it out when you wrestle as Eddie, when you have no dick. He's like, what are you talking about? That's I'm like, so that, you know that thing that you put in your, your trunks? Uh, a a strap. He puts, I, I thought he put something in his. I thought, like, I thought he protects his nuts with no, like a jock was, or something. It was his actual dick. Oh, his dick is so big. His dick is so that big. That it looks like <laughs> yeah. it's a jock. Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like it's like a, like a prosthetic fake dick. But it's wow. his actual dick. So then he's like, what do you want me to do? Remove my dick? He's like, no, that's my... What are you talking about? That's my actual dick. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, Sexy Eddie. Look at you. <laughs> so we made him wrestle in jeans. So I <laughs> was like, there's nothing thing. we can do. Because <laughs> I was like, how do we get rid of that thing that you put in your pants? My penis? <laughs> my penis? <laughs> Mike, do I'm you like, know how penises do work? You wrestle with a semi-chub? Yeah. <laughs> he's very happy to be there. Yeah. I, yeah, he is. He likes the contact. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, so. so these so these guys, because you understand wrestling well, so uh, do Some they- Some guys are the greatest. It's just like in stand-up. You know, the people who are successful, who work really well, who have things and opportunities are just joys to be around. But yeah. there's, there's other people who are just like getting into the local politics, saying the shit, starting yeah, yeah. stirring the pot. So like I kind of got out of it. So yeah, like, I heard people got mad at me when I had Jacques Rougeau on. <laughs> yeah, everybody I had, got mad at Jacques Rougeau. Everybody got mad, which is fine, but then they got, got mad at I, me. I got, like, How come you didn't ask him about what he does here and he stole this guy's money? He's like, I don't know anything about this. I'm not in wrestling politics. Yeah, I got mad at Jacques Rougeau because he tagged me on Facebook a bunch of times. He does that all the time. I know. So I was yeah. just like, listen, you old man. So, like, I was like, oh. like, so I was trying to start a beef with Jacques Rougeau to be like, listen, old man, you need to learn how to use social media, brother. I'm going to get you. Like, so And like, he took it serious? Yeah, and then he stopped tagging me. And I was just like, Oh, man. Oh, he probably thought it was a real threat. Yeah. So, but if you know me, I'm not serious ever. If I have an actual beef with you, I'll just ghost you. You know what I mean? Like, I'll just ghost. But, like, if I have a, if I have a, I'm like, Jacques Rougeau, you know, I don't need to know about your Marie Lottos thing. So, I had no great. idea. Like, I brought, I was like, oh, cool. I'm learning about what they're doing. And then people were like, you know, he almost, he nearly killed my friend's mom. He fucking, he. Uh, what did he do? He suplexed her through a table. So I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and who knows if any of that, who knows? And I don't want to talk out of turn. Maybe that, maybe that, that guy's mom got suplexed real Maybe, back. I have no idea. Bro. But people who have um, success in Quebec. Will always get attacked. Yes. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Yeah. 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 Look at our friend Mike. Yeah, the, bro, like, he's the best example. Best example. They'll just try either to make something up or they'll just. Yeah. Take something out of context or yeah. shit like that all the time. It, but it's not just Quebec. We see it here I as did Quebec. some wrestling shows and I had like people from CTV and stuff being like, Heckling you know you? what they say about you behind your back? You shouldn't work with these people. And I was about like, you? oh, yeah, about me. And like, CT everybody likes me. Hold you on. Know? CTV? Yeah, we were doing some CTV and like... So, like CTV the, told you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. weird that they're so, getting involved like that. No, well, they were just like... No, but this is like just reporters and people I know. They're like, you know what they're oh. talking about you behind your back? And I was the like, The wrestling really? guys? Yeah. How would they know? The, well, because like we were all doing interviews together, so that's when I was kind of like, ah, you know, I should step back from but this. Wrestling was it a while. gimmick thing? Like they were just no, like, I'm gonna no, get Mike Patterson. Like, ah, Mike Patterson says he's blah 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 blah, and it was just like all politics and shit, and I was just like, oh fuck. 
what the fuck? Yeah, so I was like, eh, I'm going to step back. That's okay. Yeah, okay. And then my brother started to think of his brothers, you know? So my, he's like, hey, I'm doing a wrestling thing. You going to come? And I'm okay, like, Okay, so Fine. before that with the other guys, when I you found out. out there was a lot of shit talking, you said, yeah, I, I don't I'm feel out. comfortable. Well, no, I, no, I just left. I just ghosted because I was like, I have like my career. So I can't have like people Chirping. starting. Yeah, yeah, I can't have politics and shit. So like, and also that's kind of like when I step back from the... The stand-up scene a little bit, like, so I'm not as involved you st- locally. But I, I still do lots of stand-up, but I'm not going to involve myself, you know? Oh, I, book- I bounced from that years, years ago when yeah. I started to... This was even before, like, I got involved with Mike. Uh, right. It, I just started to realize there was some fuckery afoot. Like, there was Ooh. a lot... Of, every time I'd, I'd be uh, backstage or something and I'd get excited and I'd be like, hey, guys, should do this, whatever. Then I would start noticing, like, when someone else was on stage, everybody would just be mad at them and, be like, shit talk. And I was like, ah... Uh, and it wasn't everyone. It was specific people. So I was just like, you know what? Let me do. I saw we show up, yeah. do my sets, and then bounce. I didn't yeah. want to be part of that toxic thing because I felt like it would permeate in my mind, and then I would just get resentful and angry. It's weird, yeah. And why would you get resentful and Cause angry? Because I was always oh. happy. I'm most happy to stand up. I don't want my yeah. view to change. And then when I come to the club, I'm confrontational. Yeah, or you're watching people that you're because I feel that we're doing a show together. Yeah. Whether I'm like the opener, or the host, or the headliner, we're all doing the same. We're it's us and the audience. So yeah. like, what are we doing? So. It doesn't work if you start uh, s- separating the team. Yeah. Yeah, we are a team. And that's one of the greatest things about stand-up is you never know who you're getting booked with. Because, like, the booker always does stuff. Yeah. And then you just, like, all of a sudden, oh, I'm with, like, people that I would never hang out with in my life. Like, and sometimes my life. it's fun. You see them, I you're really like, oh, God, I've made, that. I've made a lot of friends that way. And now the scene's changed in English. Yeah. There's, like, new rooms, new people. I've, yeah. I'm meeting all kinds. Like, I, I oh, step cool. back into it. Yeah. And it's, like, a lot of those people that were, like, the toxic mm-hmm. front they just disappeared maybe through COVID or they just stopped coming. Oh, cool. And when I go out at least, and I see a lot of just young, happy, fun, they're testing shit. Yeah. And it, like it, it rejuvenated my love for the scene. That's great. Here. Yeah. That's what I did when I went, when I went French. Oh. Cause French people are just like writing all the time. Positive. Like, yeah. They were like, Oh, you got on TV one time. What are you going to do next? I'm like, I have a whole like comedy special that I can translate. Like, let's yeah. go. So like, it was fun. But like, then when I ran out of my comedy special, I like still had to, how am I going to get on TV? I have to write. And then that was kind of like ex- exhilarating for me because all of my friends moved to like Toronto or Los Angeles. So you were alone. I was alone. Yeah. Do, do, which friends left from here and then fucked off? And uh, left Re- here? Rebecca Kohler. Uh, she Tim was Ramnett. here? Yeah. I didn't know she was here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tim Rabnett. Oh, Who yeah. else left? Everybody freaking left. Yeah, everybody left. Like, or, or they just quit. Like, some you know, like, quit, uh, yeah. yeah, some people I don't even talk to anymore, so. So, yeah, like, so some people quit. It's, uh, I, I mean, I kind of, especially if you're just in English and you're only doing the local scene, you can't go anywhere, really. No. You have to branch out. You have to do other stuff. And a lot of people don't even know how to use, or didn't know how to utilize the internet properly. Right. They weren't on social media, yeah. website, podcast was the first thing. So no one knows them. Yeah. So it's too hard for you to do your own thing because then there's, there was two clubs here. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Make a living bouncing from club to club? It doesn't make well, any. Well, there's one nighters. You know, you can make some money off that. Not if, not if, uh, like one nighters the club books you. But if no one knows you, you can't book a room and get people to come out because no one knows to come out. Right. You have no social presence, no social right. media presence. Yeah, I, guess I learned so. that early on. I was watching yeah. and I was like, wait a second, the guys that are making some money are the guys that don't necessarily. They're not as known. They don't have the accolades. Yeah. But they're known online. Yes. So I was like, oh shit, and they're bringing their fans. Well, and then- how do they, there's some guys who like didn't have anything that all of a sudden have like, like huge, like Neil Janna, like would have like, like all these school shows. And it was Well, fantastic. him, I think it was from what he told me, it was from the years. It was a network that he built mm. up. It starts with one, then two, then three. And then uh. what happens is it's kind of like joke writing. Yeah. And then like, let's say five years down the line, instead of him having three bookings, yeah. he's got 50. Yeah, it's cool. So he's full, and yeah. uh, guys were doing a lot of stuff like that. They were just booking shows, and they would it would become content, and that's good too, because mm-hmm. at least you know where your money's coming from, right? Because the hardest thing in stand up is that is where the fuck's your next paycheck yeah, coming? Exactly. So uh, I'm very lucky that where I'm at now is so like I'm lucky that I diversified. Yeah, that's the big thing is I because of the acting. So you have I acting. Had people tell me like. <clears throat> like you know because you get to do voiceovers blah 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 so like we really have to worry about like somebody tried to start a union in Montreal and they're like we got to work on a union because like oh it's okay for you because you do voiceovers and I was like what do you mean like Wait, a union for what for stand up in English yeah how would that help? I don't know. They were like, headliners have to make like a hundred bucks. And I'm like, I make way more than a hundred yeah, bucks. Exactly, like, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So like, it was just like crazy. So nobody's explaining 
what stand up is and how to make money in stand up. So it's really hard. Like, you know, like at the nest, you won't make that much money, but you'll do like a real thing at a place where somebody, you'll do a real room where people are like paying rent. I understand the argument of if you're, if it's a paid gig, like it's a paid show. Let's say if you you have a room, there's a hundred people that come in, they're all paying five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. And you have an act on, you have to pay the act because without the act, there's no, I I get that. But I don't know about a union to standardize everything because the standard Let's say the standard for the nest, because they could fit 130 people, uh-huh. is 50 bucks for an opener. Yeah. If I have a room and I could fit 30 people, if that's the standard, maybe I can't afford that because I, I can't right. put in the exactly. same amount of people. So a union is a little weird. I think it should just be understood. Yeah, that, like hey, a man, booker if, can make 20% or 40% yeah, just, or whatever. It's up to us. You don't even need a union. Just comedians should speak and be like, I won't do X room because every time I do, there's 300 people there and they don't even give me free drinks. I tried to do that a couple of times and then I got out of it. So. Well, I, I can't lead that. I'm too busy to lead that. Shit. Did yeah. you do it just yourself? You're like, fuck it, I'm not doing that? No, a bunch of us decided to work for, I think it's Sugar Sammy that started. He said, he said uh, he just called me and said, uh, just make sure if you headline something in a bar, just get 350 bucks. At least, yeah. Yeah, and that was probably 20 years ago. You know what I mean? And now people are still paying that, so. Yeah, that we, I had, um, the first time, I would, I, I'm not going to. Yeah, so we know most of the guys, but the first time I had headlined out of Montreal, but within Canada, I, uh, the offer they had made me was insulting for anyone. Yeah. So then uh, I was like, I'm not doing this. And then they didn't know how to react to that, so they called Mike. Yeah. And Mike's like, I'm not his manager. And then he, they told him yeah. what they were offering, and Mike laughed. He's like, Are you crazy? Yeah. He could just go downtown and make more than that right, once. Right, right. So then they saw oh, we didn't realize, and then finally we had we had found agreement. But then when I asked Mike, I go, Why would they even offer that if they want you to headline the club? And then Mike laughed. He goes, it's because there were some people that a few years ago, they made it the standard and they were like the big names in Canada. Yeah. And because they never said, oh yeah, fuck it. Let's, uh, let's talk and be like, no, these are our limits. Because they would agree to show that this is what we can make. Yeah. Everyone coming up after can't then ask if they're not as known. They can't ask for more because all they'll say is, well, this guy who's known or th- this lady who's known right. only get, got this much. Ugh. So it goes, so unless someone young that breaks the mold mm-hmm. would stand up and do something, it's impossible because they're just going to be like, fuck you, I'll pay the old guy who has a following, the, the people right. before you. So it made it hard on people. He goes, it was them. He goes, they need to step up. And I was like, oh, it's either them or a new guy has to break the mold. The new right. girl has to break the mold. It's the only way. So and like, I am one of those old guys now. Like, you know. But, you're, like, but you know your worth now. Yes. Especially since you have other, you can break the mold. You can be like three, I'm not flying out for $350 for fucking oh yeah. yeah oh yeah for sure like there are clubs that'll pay like uh and give you like good money and a plane ticket of course yeah and that's what they're trying to do here um that kid fuck Josh Shapiro at the third floor uh okay. where Stogies is okay he's they put money into the the guys that own Stogies okay uh, they, they I, have, I used to go to Stogies all the time third floor up there okay yeah, that's where uh, Bill Burr likes to smoke his cigars he was there he talked about in his podcast too that yeah. he liked the fact that they're building a club upstairs Cool. And uh, they're tr- that's what they're doing now. They're trying to get a budget together, maybe yeah. fly some people in, Super. try to get it some notoriety. Super. Yeah, they're actually working on it. It's huge. It's, it's a good thing. We need How more How many clubs. does it uh, hold? Oh, very. Poseidon, you're there all the time? About 40. Oh, my very God. Small. That's yeah. tight. Yeah. yeah. That's tight. Yeah, so you got to do. I'm being generous can, with 40. Like, yeah, if you make money. It's 40 with the bar. Yeah, if you want to make money and as a comic, you want to make real money, yeah. it's, you have to do multiple shows. You got to do like five shows. Ah, yeah. uh, no. Yeah. But See, like, it's, it's, a, it's a nice room, though. It's a nice okay. room because it's Ooh. tight. It's right. tight. And, and uh, it, yeah, once you fill like, it up. Like, absolute comedy is nine shows in a week, and it's exhausting. Yeah, nine shows in a week is. Although I did yeah. Saturday night. We saw each other last night. Yeah. Like, I did five shows at Bordell. But that was dude. only 12, 12 minutes. So it's Yeah, super. but it's still so much fun. So much fun. So, dude. Even yesterday at uh, Bordell, I did two shows. That's awesome. While you, so it's fucking awesome. It's the best place. I love being there. you get paid money. You get paid you, like 125 bucks. But that's the thing. It's great. You do five shows. Dude, they, there's people who have asked me to headline. Yeah. They go, can you headline the club for $100? Yep. I could like, make more than that doing 12 minutes. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. So, no, no. It's a... Uh, we're very lucky to have that place. Yes. Especially yes. us that do it in both languages. Yeah. It's really cool. How do you see your your um like entry into the French comedy world? It was it one of the best decisions you've taken? Yes. Yeah. It was uh my wife I went on a Ontario tour. I was gone for like a month and a half and I came back with like uh like 200 bucks. Fuck. And my wife is just like, "What?" What happened? I'm like, "You know, and I was a headliner, so I'd buy some dinners cuz like yeah. people would buy me dinner." 
Or like, you know what I mean? I just and it goes it down. All. Yeah, I just yeah. spent the whole money that I made in like that month and a half and I came back and I had nothing. And she was like, we got to do something. We got to move to like Toronto or whatever. And then I said, <clears throat> I said two things. I said, I'm going to learn how to do uh, voiceovers. I'm going to buy a USB microphone and I'm going to just really try. Because I saw somebody do something with that. I'm like, I could do cartoons. I got a really good voice. I've been training my voice my whole time. I scream a lot in stand up. Uh, so I said, I'm going to do that. And um, I had just ran into um, Etienne Dano. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I did these commercials for Casual Spore. And I was like, on the, um, like, I was the guy on the, whenever you got five goals, my face would come up. <clears throat> and be like chicken wings. Oh, you get five free chicken wings whenever I came out. And then um, he's like, "You should come and do French comedy." I'm like, "Nah, I can't do it. I, I can't speak French." She's like, "Come to Drummondville. I'll give you two hundred and fifty dollars." And I was like, two hundred and fifty dollars? That's like a month and a half in Ontario." Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I just went and I did it, and uh, it worked out really well. And then I did another show, and it went really well. And then a uh, guy called me and said, uh, hey, do you want to audition for Comedy Ha? Uh, they got a show. If you uh, do it, if you pass the audition, you'll get $1,000 on TV. And I was like, uh, this is kind of something new. I'm really new at this. I don't think I'm ready for TV. And then he said, we'll pay you $200 and you just get show a, up. Whole, a hotel room in Quebec City. Quebec City, yeah, yeah. So I went to a hotel room in Quebec City. I partied. Uh, I did a show. And then I got the show on my sixth ever stand-up show. And my ninth ever stand-up show in French was on TV. Hosted by Riel Belin. And after the show, Riel Belin said, uh, Hey, Mike, uh, you did a really good job. I want you to be the announcer of my Music Plus show. And I said, Don't make fun of me, dude. I'm just trying this out. And he's like, No, Mike, we're going to call you tomorrow. This is and amazing. you're going to be the announcer of my Music Plus show. And I was like, You know, I. It's not nice to do this to sound because I just felt I like felt, they're teasing. I really thought he was just winding me up. It because they were because like he had his director with him and his director was just like laughing too much. Oh, so you thought they were they were busting I thought balls. they were just breaking my balls. Yeah. And then I got the call the next day and they're like they were like, scream for me and do this and can you do this? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm announced. They're like, Hey, you know, like I was like the Don Pardo. Of Real Belong show, and I got 26 episodes. God damn! In a freaking in a boop, 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 boop. and then my wife was like, very much like, let's live in Montreal. Like, yeah, yeah, so the, it's really cool. Well, me too. When I got in the French thing, it changed my it's whole perception. I was like, oh fuck, I could live here. Yeah, and then also our friend Mike, who said, I will help you. I was like, no, I want to make my own way, and then he still helped me. Yeah, no, Mike is dude. <laughs> I if it wasn't so. for Mike, I wouldn't have a career in French. Oh, uh, yeah. I it's, wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for Mike. Dude, yeah. he helps me out so much all the time. He's paying yeah. for my freaking vasectomy. I did... Uh, <laughs> you I did, did my- good. <laughs> and Mike, when you brought up that you were getting or you wanted to get a vasectomy, but you want to get the one that's done by lasers because you're yes. a man of the future. I'm a science fiction person. You're not living in the past. And I do not believe in the Quebec government healthcare system. I think Nobody it's does. Bad. Yeah, it's a terrible. Like, what do they got? The government like, doesn't believe they, in it. Yeah. By yeah. that new decision they made, they want to create a new entity that will govern that. Did you hear about this? No. An entity already used to exist, and yeah. they got rid of it, and now they're like, we're going to create a new entity, and then they could communicate and monitor. Why don't they just pay some nurses? What? Like, yeah, why don't you just put more money into yeah. it and let them do shit properly? Yeah. Like, Fine, I don't know, we're going to get doctors, something to govern. Let immigrant doctors be doctors? They don't, you know? let, they like, don't let them. They don't let them. No, you're a doctor, but no, 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 Quebec doctor. You were a surgeon in Pakistan? Yeah, exactly. I can't even you, spell it. You, yeah, you were a surgeon that was putting killer whale orca penises on yeah. wrestlers? <laughs> like, so. he, he, here's a voucher for Uber. Go yes. ahead. So, That's what um, they do. Yeah, but anyway, so I said last night on Suza Kut, which is another great podcast, that I didn't have, I, I have to go and pay $800. And uh, I said, if you want to crowdfund with me, let's get some money. And then Mike just reached into his wallet, 
pulled out a wad of cash and gave it to me. And then I'm just a, I'm a heel. So I counted it and it was only like $520. So I'm like, you're missing 280 bucks. He's like, I'll, I'll give it to you later. You son of a bitch. I know. I'm such a son. And then the other guy on the show is like, you're going to give the money back. I'm like, no, I'm going to keep this money. But I, I did like spoiler alert. I tried to give it back to him after the show. And he said, no, I said, nah, yeah. let me give it to you. And then say that you, um, paid for my, uh, he's like, Mike, uh, I just spend money. Yeah. yeah he doesn't. <laughs> Dude, we were when we were in Gatineau, we were going to the casino. He was just pulling out wads of cash, and he was giving Poseidon money so Poseidon could gamble. He's what? like, you got to gamble too. And then we also had at one point, uh, David, one of the guys from Simple Plan. Yeah. And it's a guy from Simple Plan. I'm pretty sure he could gamble himself. Sure. But still, he's Mike's like kicking wads of cash. Like, Here, go gamble. Like he's treating everyone like wow. they're his he's kids. He's like a godfather. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. If you won, would you give him something? Sorry? Oh, Did you course. win Poseidon? If I, no, no, he no, lost, no, he lost. I lost everything <laughs> and I felt like a piece of garbage because yeah. it wasn't my money. Yeah. And, um, uh, but if I won, of course I'd give him money. Yeah, he, yeah, he bankrolled Crazy. you. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. See, I don't gamble. I'm not a good gambler. I have friends who have gambling problems, so like uh, I've watched them like kind of flame out or like be like stress out at comedy shows because they're gambling too much, and then like so I've always kind of hated it. Yeah, so. we're we're not. None of us are degenerate gamblers. Like it, actually, it's the first time we all ever gambled together. The whole time we know each other because we're at the casino. Yeah, and in Gatineau. And Gatineau. That's yeah. a really good casino. Uh, we well, uh, yeah. Whatever, it's a well, casino. No, the, no, I mean the, the people are awesome. The showroom. Oh, the, I we all, we didn't get to the showroom. We hung oh. around about the bar and. Oh, okay, uh, so I've only gone. To, I only play in uh, casinos. The casinos, and oh, then I go fun. home. Yeah, I want to. I've never even thought about playing casino. So it's it's not bad. It's a free audience. So like the audience, so you don't is know free. what you're gonna get. Yeah. <clears throat> but there, it's French, so it's great. So I've done every single casino. So I had an entente with Comedy Ha that, like, they I did like I hosted like, and I got to do every casino, like you know, like Quebec, Charlevoix, where the whales are. And Can stuff. you see whatever you want at the casino, or are they like since it's, it's a free crowd, you got to be careful? It's night and day. It's night because like if you go to like Niagara Falls, uh, you can't say whatever you want. If you go to Vegas, you can't necessarily say what you want. Everything changes. But like there, they're just like, yeah, that was great. And like I hosted in Charlevoix. And like it was like half full, but then the next week they all came back and brought people with them. And then the next week, so like it was great. So like every week there was just more and more until like like after about three shows, it was like a full crowd and like really fun. And like it's probably like 150 people, but still, it was that's like fucking awesome. good. Yeah, what are you talking about? It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's no. really cool. And then like it's weird. Like with French people, they're like always like, ah, is it gonna work for Mike Patterson? We're gonna send him to Riviera de Lou. He's probably gonna really. Uh, and then I when I first I remember. Headlining Riviera de Lou, and then they were like really kind of the host was really good and waiting to, for me to fuck up. And then, You're an um, asshole. yeah, I did. Well, it was kind of like they were like, We're ready in case Mike goes to a small town and does bad. And then I did really good. And then the booker was like, You did so good. We thought you were going to, we paid this guy to sit here and wait. Well, we thought, yeah, exactly. Well, like he was the host, so he could have gone on and saved the show, you know, kind of thing. So he was already on. So, like, but I was just like, Why would you pay me? To fail. They were like, we didn't know, but you didn't fail. Look at risk you. takers. Yeah. You guys are bad at business. No, but I think that's cool to risk take. Like, yeah, you know not, I mean? not in that it kind of field. It helped my career. It helped my, like, it helped well, my Well, us, we day. have to take risks. Yes. But we're not the conglomerate. No. We're trying to become the conglomerate. Right. How do you do that? I have no freaking idea. I, I don't, well, I think now you kind of, we kind of are because we're, we're, you're a brand of yourself. We're, yes. you're not just some guy now with the voiceovers, with the acting, with the wrestling, you've diversified. Yeah. You're, that's it. You're, you're a company. Yeah. I'm a company. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, French, English, podcasts, French casts, fucking yeah. stand up. That's it, cool. And you've yeah. been podcasting forever. That's really yeah, awesome. 2010. Yeah. Yeah. That's when awesome. I, you remember when I had first started, it was uh, just before I, it was two years before I ever even did stand up. Okay. And when I was first speaking about it, Everyone thought it was the dumbest waste of time. Like, I don't get what you're doing. You're hanging out with right. your friends in a basement. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like a radio show, but on the internet, and we just have conversations. Like, conversations? Yeah, yeah. Who the fuck is going to listen to a conversation? To a convers but I have kids, and I have to go drive a lot. I got to go shop a lot. So I'm just listening to podcasts all the time. Yeah, same. I fucking love it. Yeah. I've always loved it, but I always loved talk radio also before that. Right. That's where it came from. I loved, like, Howard Stern, Opie, and Anthony especially. Yeah. I that's what when I was uh, working at EA. Yeah, my days I had my headphones EA, on. Like EA Sports. Yeah, like electronic cool. cards. Cool. What'd you do? Oh, I was a development manager. Uh, I was a what the fuck was I, bro? I was development <laughs> coordinator, and then they were training me to become an assistant development manager. 
okay. my last time there. And I thought that was going to be my career. I was going to become a development manager. Yeah. And there was a guy who was a dev manager there that was like, Patrice, his name was, one of my favorite people. Uh, and I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to be my career. I'm going to be in video games. And then they shut everything down. Ah. And the only opportunity was if I wanted to move to Vancouver. And even the pay was like... And you're Greek and you got to be close to your family. Uh, not just that, but also <laughs> I, I don't like... Like there's nothing about Vancouver that's appealing to me. Right. And even pay-wise, I was like, well, I'm kind of... Mi- would be making the same, but everything's more expensive there. Yeah. My life would fucking suck. Yeah. So then th- that like put everything... Uh, like In perspective. In perspective. And then I was working in virtual reality for a while while cool. I was doing stand-up at night. Okay. And until I made like the, the full shift... Uh, to just do comedy and podcasting and that. I worked for about a month and a half trying to get a virtual reality comedy show going. Okay. And then I decided to back out of it because it seemed really hard. But I always thought it was going to be amazing to have a live show with people performing in... Um, in VR? In VR, but in total VR gear. You know, so you're just watching and then you could watch a screen... And watch yourself do, and like you're watching. It's like, say you're at the like. I think uh, Rodney Ramsey does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told him, but I said that you should, like, then Rodney was doing it. I was like, yeah, but imagine you're just, you also see live just some, like, some dummy. Like an avatar? No, you see the avatar, but live you just see, like, a guy with, like, goggles on his face going, like, trying to tell jokes and shit. Oh, that would be retarded. It would be really stupid. (laughs) So, like, I like silly things, you know? So, like, you're watching the silliness unfold, and you're also watching the comedy show of avatars doing stuff. Do you think that's something, if we're not forced to lock down, that's something that will really um, get bigger and continue? Because, personally... I don't like the feeling of the di- of the Zoom shows, the digital. I know some people don't give a fuck. I really it's, enjoy the Zoom shows. Like watching them or doing them? I did it. Doing well, them what, and getting paid what, is one thing. Yeah, getting paid. I like doing them because also I, I had like young children. So like I could I'm just sorry? be. I have young kids. I, I like young children. Ah! I, was, I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with it? I like, uh, yeah. Uh, and I can't go close to them because yeah, the restraining yeah, orders. The restraining orders. Now what Zoom allows. <laughs> no, no. What I did was, uh, no, I, 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 I have kids. So yeah, like, yeah. I would always have to like, like drive to do like all kinds of Christmas shows every December. And then I would be like coming home like really late and stuff like that. And then like this one, I would be like, be able to do like three or four in a night yeah. in my basement. And I bought a long um, earphone. So one of the things I, I bought like an earbud that's long. Right? Like, like extra. Extra long so that I could hear the laughter. So I was like, oh, I can't hear the laughs. I can't do this. So that I just like, I worked with Amir, right? Who told me what to buy. Yeah, why don't you just put AirPods? Yeah. Yeah, I, no, I put, uh, I got a, a Scarlet, um, I got an interface. Oh, for the mic, you mean? Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. mic and for the audio so I could hear my own audio kind of thing. I could have gotten AirPods too, but I'm just too worried about like Bluetooth for some yeah, reason. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. It's so smarter it, like, to be wired in. Yeah. yeah, I was just wired in and then I got really addicted to it and I got like, uh, I took a base, my basement, um, I, I moved during the pandemic to like the West Island. I now have a basement. I have like a room. You have the space. I have the space. I have a room that's just like my little crappy studio, and I got like you know like like the you know like the um, the the whatever this the foam yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. And then like I I, I bought some lights and uh, I just go, and that's where I auditioned for Predator. Over, oh, it was a Zoom one. It was a Zoom. Yeah. So I got really into. Did Zoom. you get really into the character when you were auditioning? Hell yeah. Yeah. You went Hell yeah. Deep, huh? Yeah. I'm very good at getting into the character, but also being a, a super prof- professional dude because, like, I play like a fucking maniac on stage whenever I'm doing stand up. <laughs> but sometimes I'd be so adrenalized that other comedians didn't want to hang out with me, or um, club owners thought I was on coke, <laughs> or something. So, like, I just, I did. Develop this, and I basically have this persona of on off. Yeah, I have a click that goes off. Like when I do stand up, a click goes off, and then what I do with acting is uh, it's something. It sounds really pretentious, but it's something I learned doing Toy Story Four, and it's um, getting an emotion to actually give you your character. So when I did do Kaboom in French, I had like an emotion kind of thing. Like I was just like showing joy of being out. Like, like you're was, tapping into something that makes you feel that way. Is yeah, that what you're saying? And that gives you the character. In in Prey, what I was doing was rage. That what were you Max, thinking of? I was rage that Max fear. It was uh, the other thing is uh, my whole motivation for my character of Big Beard was I wanted to wear the Predator like a jacket. And that's what you kept thinking. Yeah. Get me my jacket. You're like, I'm going to dominate this. I Get want this. Get me this is my mine. fucking jacket. Get me my jacket. 
Shish wa mo manto. You know, and I said that a couple of times. And then, um, like, you all of a sudden they're like, cut. Hey, Mike, what did you say? I said, oh, I said, shish wa mo manto. They're like, what does that mean? Go get me my jacket. They're like, what is? what do you mean? I'm like, oh, Big Beard wants to wear the Predator like a jacket. And then the guy goes into the walkie-talkie that, like, you know, hundreds of people listen to. Uh, he says he wants to wear... Uh, the, <laughs> the predator like a jacket and then you just hear all this laughter coming from the forest because like it was always like forest full of crew and then uh first day he's like uh carry on mike carry on <laughs> and then like i talked to the writer later it's like yeah you wanted to wear him like a jacket that's, that's amazing good. that's amazing yeah and I'm like, great 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 because the character that you had was like a, a bully leader tra- like but he I'm didn't a give a fuck I, and I you were skinning first. and that's first. what you were doing yeah because yeah. when you were skinning the what was that thing the, the buffalo yeah yes yeah, so that's <laughs> exactly what you're doing so now you're like there's a new animal <laughs> yeah i'm gonna skin this bitch too yeah, i wear a bear yeah why don't yeah. i wear a fucking a predator. Uh, an extraterrestrial i'll tell you why fucking dangerous yes it turns fucking out dangerous it wasn't a good idea you know what always fucks with me about the predator uh, you know they have that like device, kind of like glitch and yeah, reboot. The gauntlet. The gauntlet. Uh, always the typing fucks with me. It makes me laugh. It yeah. just feels so out of place because of the fingers. Because yeah. like, I'm, t- it feels like I'm taking something animalistic and then applying human traits to it. And, right. and there's something weird about it. I oh, really? Me, yeah, I I, it always that. takes me out. Because when he did that, because he doesn't play with. He's a cheater. He doesn't play with like a. He's like not a, playing fair. Yeah. First of all, he's invisible. First of all, he's invisible. That's not a fair fight. Not a fair fight. And Become visible. Gonna, yeah. And then whenever he's like, oh, no, now I'm in trouble. Do, 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 do. And everybody blows up. Yeah. So decide. What are you? You're the best hand-to-hand combat yeah. alien in the galaxy? Yeah. Or are you just some dude? And he's with- got a shield in this one. Yeah. And that was a cool move. The head yeah, cutting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was cool. Fuck. A lot of heads. Yeah. Who, who decides all those action sequences? Do the writers say where they want to go with it? Or is there a specific action team that's like, yo, we could do this? They they mostly wrote all that stuff. And then they I, they also had like a really good special effects crew. Like really great special Who's effects crew. Who's the team behind this? Because they... Same team. They're doing good shit. I think it's AVI. Same team that did the first Predator. Okay. And uh, and first then, first Predator. First first Predator. Oh fuck. Yeah. Okay, that's. And why. you know the first 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 Predator was Jean Claude Van Damme, and he didn't take it. No, he did it, but he was on stilts, and he was like kind of like um he was on like they put the best kicker in the world on stilts, and like he was kind of like um. Like a like a like a dinosaur. Oh, so and it felt weird. Yeah, it wasn't good, and so they reshot it with like a wrestler kind of thing. Oh, fuck! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, then that second Predator was great. So hold on a second. So the first first first, he did the they made him record the entire movie. Yeah, and then they put it together. They didn't like it. He was walking funny. Yeah, like they should have just had him kicking. You know, <laughs> but stilts is because he was a small dude, and they felt it's not threatening enough. Or they, that's just what they built. They oh. built a, they built, and then they built another one. And okay, then a, apparently okay. James Cameron talked to um, the director and said they should have mandibles, those things coming out of his cheeks. That's so fucking cool. Yeah. So and I, really I cool. prefer practical effect. How, mu- how much of it was Tons practical? Of practical. Yeah, there was like. Like yeah. the, the Predator himself, it wasn't CGI. What no, I it was like I a saw. seven foot dude. There was like two seven foot dudes. Like they had like dudes, like just tall ass dudes. You're just staring at their dongs. Like, they're just like, they're like, hi, Mike. You're like, oh, you're tall. Uh, so, like, yeah. And then they were in a Predator thing. And, like, they were like, there was not a lot of uh, CGI. They did they did go through and scan every single, um, after every scene, they scanned everything just to make sure in case any, like, extra CGI had to be had. But, like, Interesting. It's, That's cool. Yeah, it was awesome. And, like, the, those guys were, like, scanning me. Like, and I got to do a 3D scan of myself. So maybe there'll be an action figure, I hope. Oh, uh, that would be, be so cool. That would be so cool. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put it up there if there's an action Super. figure. Yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be, be great. badass. Big beard, big beard action figure. That'd be killer. They might. Why not? The, yeah, all these collectibles scan, they sell. Yeah, they 3D scanned me. So. so they 3D scan your whole body? Yeah, like, it's like, you know, bullet time in uh, the Matrix where you have, like, a million cameras, but now you can just do that with, like, the tiny little uh, DSLR cameras. So, it's, like, it's so insane how yeah, it, it was a truck. Dude, I remember when uh, just the 3D camera, like, how long it would take and how many, mini cameras there were. Yeah. And now people are doing similar things with cell phones. Yeah. It's fucking insane. Yeah, how they had moving. a truck with, like, you know, like, probably, like, 400 DSLR cameras in there. And it was pretty cool. And then they scanned my whole body, and it was cool. And they didn't tell you why? Oh, they told me why. It was just in case they need to do something with me, with and my body. They, and they could just... Yeah. 
in a scene, they'll be like, oh, it would have been cool if Mike had done this. Yeah. Well, he's not around, but we can still do this. Yeah, you just you just move your body up and down, and you just do all the things. This but, is fucking wacky. Yeah, but they didn't need to. They just did it good, you know? What about for voiceovers? you have anything coming up? Uh, Not really. No, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I did a Renault Assistance commercial. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. That's it. I, I audition a lot, and I haven't gotten anything. There's, like, some guy that's, like, saying he's going to put me in his movie, but we'll see if that's happening. You Hopefully know? it's a good movie. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I just work. I'm just a working actor. So, like, if people go, like, hey, I'm going to do this. Oh, great. Let's go. Let's work. And even if it's bad, I'll do it. I think Scream 6 is filming here. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't get an audition for that. Yeah, I wasn't aware. His, 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 the only person I know that's on it is his brother. That's yeah. uh, What's yeah. his brother doing? Uh, I think uh, attacking people. Stunts. As, yeah, stunts. Cool. Your brother's yeah, yeah, yeah. a stunt dude. Isn't a, yeah. yeah, isn't a, he started off recently uh, being a stuntman. Cool. Yeah, it's his first big gig. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I yeah I work with stunties all the time. Happy for him, dude. That he's a he's a young kid who when he was telling people I want to be a stuntman, everyone's like, "You're a retard. <laughs> That's not a goal." Yeah, but it is a goal. I did a movie with Tom Sizemore, and I watched Tom Sizemore's stunt double. Like basically, I'm getting my groceries. I'm eating a lollipop. I was an Elvis impersonator who was also like a criminal, and then. <laughs> um, Tom Sizemore runs up, that a car comes to a screeching halt, and then the cops come out and they arrest him, but he's actually a cop in deep cover. But then I watched the uh, the stunt double like slide over the hood of the car uh, once, slide over the hood of the car as the car is stopping twice, three, four, on the fifth time, he gets hit with a car, and it goes boom, 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 and then they gets up, the director goes, wow, that was great, how do you feel? Do you want to do another one? Let's do another one. And then he had to get going. And like I'm like, stunts is no joke, man. Holy fuck. But he was supposed to get hit by the car. He was not supposed to get hit by a car. Oh, he was not supposed to yeah, get hit. That makes like, it crazier. Jump in the air as the car. And slide. Uh, yeah, jump in the air as the car comes to a stop and then slide over the hood. Kind of thing. And the car kept, oh my God. So six, yeah, out of six times, one time he got hit. And he's like, it's okay. I bought a hot tub. And I was like, okay. Oh, that's what, oh my God. Yeah. I, that's a fucked up guy. It's kind of like if you're, yeah, it's just like sports. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a limit. There's a, there's a yeah. number of years that you can do that job. Yeah. And wrestling. Uh, well, wrestling big time. Dude, uh, all I hear about is the older wrestlers and the pain killing uh, addiction. Yeah. And it, the painkillers, uh, sadness. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. And the, and the, um, the jarring of your brain. So there's like some people who I know whose brains are different now. Like uh, chair shots. Was, no, like just jumping up and landing on your back and just, just like their brains are dislodged now. Holy fuck. And how do, what does that change? Like they can't think? Well, all of a sudden they're just, they're just dicks. You know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, I knew this guy. This is mean. I don't think that's a, that's I don't think that's oh, a, yeah, yeah, maybe they're just an asshole. <laughs> that's yeah, all yeah, right. They're just assholes, oh, Mike, it's bro. Gonna be like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, okay. I think I'm gonna hey, how you been? Excuse. Leave me alone, Mike. Yeah. Wow, this guy wow. <laughs> must have really taken some hits. Wow, he took some. Yeah, you're right. I am a little bit too. Uh, I'm a little bit too happy go lucky. Like my friend, I saw my friend Rebecca Kohler was like, I, I was. I'm a little more jaded these days, and she's like, finally, you're finally jaded. You used to always be so positive, and I like being positive. I like keeping my. I like keeping my surroundings positive. Same. Yeah. So I, you, I don't like because it's so easy. Darkness, the darkness of like yeah. sadness, depression yeah. is so seductive. Yeah. You can't let it in too much because it'll take over. <laughs> it's true. It'll, it's yeah. so easy to fall into it. You get into a car with a comedian and they're like, hey, how you doing? Oh, my life. <laughs> You're just like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. We got to go in a car for two hours. My wife left like, me. Yeah, exactly. So many people lost their wives. Yeah, during the past, oh, dude, during the lockdowns and yeah. shit, so many people, I, I was so fucking lucky. Yeah. They're like, so uh, you guys hate each other now? I was like, no, nah, it's fucking it's the same. Well, cool. I spend all of my time with my wife because yeah. like, I don't like work. I don't, I work like an hour and a half, like a day. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, and I don't, I don't work every day, yeah, you yeah. know? So like we spend, and we already, we've been together 17 years, you know? So like we already know how to spend time with each other. Yeah, exactly. So it was fine. Same. I was like, no, nothing. Uh, I know a lot of people who broke up because of it. Yeah. Like, I can't take this fucking person. Yeah. yeah that's nothing changed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I got lucky. That's great. That's well, great. I got lucky. I mean, I kind of chose the right person. Yeah. That's uh, if you uh, marry well. That's yeah. another thing. Marrying well is that's one of the biggest things for me. Like, I used to always be like chasing like you know actors or other comedians, and then like just no. That, I, for me, I can't see how that would work. Like me and a comic. 
Yeah, I didn't. No. Yeah, what did I never I even dated a comic. I don't want anything to do with them. Yeah, I dated comics. That's too. It's too fucked up for me. Mm. I thought it'd be good for the jokes. Uh, That's for sure. <laughs> we can write jokes together. at the expense yeah. of someone's uh, emotions. Yeah, right, right, right. So, like, I'm somebody who's like, it's hard for me to write jokes. To take them. But now I'm able to write jokes in my old age. But as, as a young man, I'm like, you needed. I needed a, somebody to write with. I always needed a writing partner. And actually, I write with my wife. Oh, get the fuck out! Yeah, so she gives you premises, premises, and yeah, and uh, she does shit like you know, like we wrote, like uh, like we write jokes together, like you know, there was like when when she had a kid, we had it when she had a kid, when we both had a kid. I think she had it. I think you were just there. Yeah, well, I made the DJ playlist. Uh, so, <laughs> so like we had a joke. Um, it was like uh, every time I change a diaper. My wife will give me a granola bar, and now I'm getting really fucking fat because I uh, I love granola bars. So I was just like, oh yeah, you're gonna need a bigger box, bitch, because I fucking love granola bars. And speaking of bigger boxes, my wife, because uh, <laughs> I'm talking about her vagina yeah, yeah, yeah. being bigger from whatever. And so I had people who know me come to the show and be like, I'm gonna tell Monica that you're saying that her vagina's, vagina's bigger. I'm like, who the fuck do you think wrote that? Do you think I could come up with that? Like, I'm not I'm not even thinking about that. Like my wife's fucking wide mouth vagina after giving birth to I can't believe but I can't believe people were such narcs too oh, I'm gonna I know. fucking tell, shut the fuck up and enjoy the show yeah I was like who the fuck but who wrote that Monica and how you that. gonna tell her? you're gonna speak into her yeah. massive vagina <laughs> what are you gonna oh, yeah oh. <laughs> Using my wife's giant vagina as a megaphone. A, is that what you're fucking normal. planning, Sylvia? Yeah. Huh? Uh, do you have any uh, stand-up shows coming up? You have like a mini tour? Uh, not real. I, I'm going to Germany for uh, vacation. Uh, yeah, vacation. I'm going to do a couple of shows. To um, yeah, going to do a couple of shows in French in Switzerland. Oh, nice. But I'm mostly my my wife's grandparents are still alive, we'll so we're going to go. Yeah, we're going to go show off the new kid, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do October 19th at uh, Studio TD. Oh fuck! Yeah. That's, is that that's in French? No, it's in English. Oh, fuck. I'm going to record my new album. I think that's a nice room. It's a very yeah, nice it's the Astro. That's what we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I was going to. Uh, I just couldn't get the dates to work with the Comedy Nest, and then it didn't work. And then I was like, "Let's run the place. I need an album." So like, like the Comedy Nest didn't want to give you the dates. No, they were already booked. And you just wanted you could only I handle want that October. I want to do it in October because like I'm at a point with um, my material so good and it's so ready and it's you want to get it done now. I have to get it done now because it's gonna all like uh, morph into something else. Yeah, my stuff started morphing. Yeah. Some for the better, but some I'm like, ah, fuck, why is it morphing this way uh, in French? And I, I want to, because I'm still touring it, but yeah. I, I want to record it soon because I don't want to lose Are that Are you going to record fire. a French album? Yeah, I'm going to record a double album. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the hour in English and in French and have a double album. Where? Where am I going to record it? I don't know. I'm doing my hour again. At, I'm doing my hour at the Bordel in October. Cool. Uh, but I don't want to record it there because every there's so many comics that record their stuff there. Oh, are they are they allowed to record there? I mean, if you're just doing audio, no one's gonna fucking care. Sick. Uh, well, but I know I that Mike that. did there, Bedford. Like every, so I wouldn't. Oh, cool. I wouldn't. I don't want that look. I love that look, but I, I don't want it to feel generic. I w I'd rather rent like a small place and right. do it myself. Like Studio TD. TD, that, no, I want I wanted to have the comedy club feel. I want it to okay. feel smaller. Studio TD is good for, it looks good and it's like fucking grand. It's yeah. a beautiful place. But I wanted to have the feel of a comedy club. Right. At right. least for this one. And then maybe the That's next cool. album will be bigger. Right. But for this one, I want to get it done on in both languages. Okay. And then... Uh, same night or... Uh, no, not same night. Same right. Night. I just want to have it because it's the same hour almost. Yeah. Uh, French and English. So I, I, I just want to have like a Do double album. Do you have an uh, uh, English album? No. I've had I've recorded half hours before. Okay. But never released as an album. Have never you give audio. Them to like serious and stuff? I've never uh, the only stuff that serious has is the stuff that I did last year with JFL. Oh cool. Um but what I want to do is this album in English, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to serious. Great. Okay. Cuz yeah. I I did the Just for Laughs thing this year. It's it fun. Great. I had a great time. Yeah. yeah it's fun you get the I mean you're going to forget about it and then you're going to be getting checks. Oh yeah, I have two yeah. albums, and then I forget about it, and I get checks like every quarter, and it's, it's just like the best, which is why I have to make a new album. Like, but the, oh, the, I can't wait to get that album to uh, the Series Six M so they yeah. could fucking play it because I'm very proud of it. It's you cool. know, it's been years that I've been hundred percent fucking yeah. with these jokes. My first album was really good. My second album was good, but not as good as. But my it's first always album. like that. Yeah, the first, but this third album, I've had three years like. 
and a pandemic and, you feel and good another kid and all this stuff. So it's like stuff and a freaking blockbuster movie. Yeah, yeah. So it's the crazy. Time. And also I'm writing a one man show right now called Mike Patterson versus Predator. So I'm writing just about predators, why I like why I gravitated towards violence as a kid. And why we all, in the 80s, we were just so into, like, the violence. And, like, I talk about a lot of movies, a lot of wrestling. And back in the day, I wrote a fringe play called Macho Man vs. Predator. And it was about the Macho Man Randy Savage fighting a predator and then dying in the first seconds of the, of the play. And then Jake the Snake Roberts sees it on television, decides to get off his crack chair and smoke a little crack, smoke a little steroids, and go down to the jungles and have a face-off against a predator. What the fuck, bro? I wrote this play. And it was during Harry Potter, so the whole time he's reading Harry Potter. So, like, Jake the Snake's like, now this man, Harry Potter, says he can talk to snakes. I always knew Damien's mind, but I was never able to, like, actually talk to him. I enjoy this Harry Potter. I wonder if I can tap into... And he was just always talking about tapping into the the magic and stuff like that. And in the end, he gets magic. And he's able... You get the references, like if you're wrestling marks, that's a fucking hilarious it show. It was for 30 people. It was for like, it might have been, it, it, it was a show that was for basically a bunch of like 18 to 28 dudes at the time. Knowing the references, that's a good time. It was really great. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really stupid. It was really stupid. Like we did like uh, Elton John write some... Um, like, you know, when um, Princess Diana died, he rewrote Candle in the Wind for yeah, Princess yeah. Diana. He rewrote Candle in the Wind for the Macho Man. So, like, that's in there. What I like about that joke is that uh, when he did Candle in the Wind, he said, I'm only doing this one time. I'm never going to. And then he kept, after a few years, it was everywhere. Yeah, exactly. He's like, this is a one time. You're never going to hear this again. And after he's like, how much money? Yeah, exactly. And they did it for a goodbye, Macho King. Yeah. Though I never knew you at all. <laughs> like, it was just so fun. And then you just sit down at a, at a fake piano and, and then you're like, and I played like Macho Man, Predator, Elton John. Uh, I didn't play the Predator. I played uh, I played uh, Macho Man. Um, I played Jake the Snake, Elton John. You know, like. You, you, you I, dress up? Yeah. Yeah, I would dress up in all kinds of different characters. It was a two-hander. It was only two people in the play, me and Tim Rabnin. And Tim played the Predator? No, Tim Yeah, Tim played the Predator. He played um, a guy who sold uh, luggage, uh, snakeskin, because uh, Jake the Snake has to buy luggage. He plays a guy. Um, he played a baseball player. So he meets a baseball player waiting for a plane, and then uh, he's like, I'm a baseball player. I've taken a lot of steroids. I'm like, you haven't taken enough steroids. I'm a professional wrestler. So they have... Um, I know uh, about steroids. I know about steroids. So like, they have an old fashioned steroid smoking contest where we just basically we made like we're smoking yeah it's like we're smoking joints but like we were smoking steroids like it was a joint and Tim had uh, two uh, like one and a half liter water bottles full of like black liquid and then we're gonna whoever fucking whoever shits their pants first (laughs) and then he just shit his pants for this is the kind of shit I would write for the fringe Um, and basically like you undo the the water bottle and and a bunch of and he just shits everywhere and then he goes, oh no, oh, I feel happening again. And then another one and a half liter bottle of shit comes out. And then I'm like, and that's why you don't fuck with wrestlers. You know, is this a crazy? And then I'm going to talk about that, obviously. I'm not going to perform the play. Yeah. But I'm going to I'm gonna mention talk. it. I'm going to mention the, the stupid stuff because it was like such a stupid play. It's such a, there's good anecdotes. Yeah. Are yeah. tickets uh, on sale already for TD? Not a chance. Oh, uh, for TD, I think they might be. Uh, I think if you, I don't know. I'm going to announce it. I actually have not. I've, I think I just rented it like two days ago. Okay. Well, and when you do announce it, where are they going to get tickets? October 19th. Uh, probably from my website. It's going to be Ticketmaster. It has to be Ticketmaster. Oh, yeah. They don't let you do anything yeah, else. Yeah, they don't yeah. let you do anything else. Okay. So off your website, they'll be able to get the links? MikePatterson.ca. Already in the description. So if you guys want to catch Mike in Montreal, October 19th. Yeah. They're heading to the TD Theater. Is that what they're calling it? TD Studio. TD Studio. Yeah. I prefer Astral. Yeah, but that's another media they company. They should have called it. Yeah, that's true. The, the, you know, the Toronto Dominion. Like, you know, Toronto has Dominion all over Canada, brother. That's a cool fucking name. Toronto Dominion? Yeah. God damn, you got some yeah. balls. Yeah. Toronto Dominion. So, uh, MikePatterson.ca? Yeah. Is that it? The CA? Yeah. You're like Mike. Mike yeah. also goes with the CA. Well, I couldn't get .com because it, it was some other Mike. It's another Patterson. Mike Patterson. Yeah. So get your tickets right now if I you have the chance. Sasquatch. I think he's a Sasquatch expert. Yours? <laughs> yeah. 
my dot com, Mike Patterson, he's like a guy that knows a lot about Sasquatches. So get like, the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, I think he's like. Uh, Wait, let's check that out before we Mike go. Mike Patterson Sasquatch. Oh, it doesn't even want to go. This guy lost his website. Oh, don't go there. Your connection is not private. <laughs> yeah, they fucked up. Mike Patterson. Mike Patter. Sasquatch. Yes. Following further in the footsteps of Sasquatch. What? Do you believe in Sasquatch? No. No? You don't believe that he's like a extra dimensional being that like comes in and out and... Uh... Is that what they're saying now? Yeah. That's, oh, why that's you absurd. Can't... Yeah. First I heard it was just an advanced like ape. Where I was like, okay, maybe because like... Maybe. There's yeah. some of us that are in a tribe and they look hairy and you think that it's a gorilla. Yeah. All right. I'm willing to believe there. But then when they're like, no, he wears hats and he has jobs. Like, get the fuck out of here. I used to be into a lot of conspiracy theories, but then all the conspiracy theories turned out to be like, you know, like, you know, like racist people. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like Mandela effect. There's like no way that Mandela was the prime minister. You know, oh, is, that is that a theory? No, but the Mandela effect was like some people remember that Mandela was the prime minister of South Africa. And then other people remember that like he died in prison. And, and then it was like, and that's what ended apartheid. But like, I'm like, that's racist because you can't believe that a black man could be the the prime minister. Of oh, South is that Africa. how you took it? That's how I. Well, that's how I'm taking it. Is like, you know the, you know what I mean? So it's like S Sasquatch. It's like, look, man, if you believe Sasquatch in Sasquatch, is, yeah, Sasquatch, that means that transphobic. you don't want women to vote. Yes, exactly. Sasquatch is transphobic. You're like, why can't you? Do you know, it's just like some hairy dude going like, nah, I don't blame. Him. Oh, yeah. For being transphobic or for not letting women vote? For both. Both. <laughs> well, listen, bro, we can't just let society go downhill maybe, like this. Maybe Poseidon is half Sasquatch. Yeah, he's starting the Sasquatch rumors online. Oh, he's, yeah. he's the conspiracy. Uh, blonde Sasquatch. So, uh, Mike, thank you for fucking being hey, here. Hey, we did it. For everyone that's listening to this, seriously, if you're in Montreal, October 19th, there's no reason why you shouldn't go to the fucking TD studio and uh, help Mike record a badass album. Yeah, man. We've been